Hi, I'm Vignesh from BioWorld. And based on what we learned in my previous video on photoperiodism, you should know by now that flowering in plants is not determined by the length of daylight. Instead, it is determined by the relative length of darkness the plant is exposed to. So, in this video, I am going to explain the mechanism of action in flowering. The syllabus requires you to be able to explain the mechanism of phytochrome action and how it is related to photoperiodism and flowering. So let me start off by introducing phytochromes. Phytochromes are photoreceptors that absorb light. They are located in the cell membrane of the leaf cells and it is a blue-green pigment. The characteristic of the phytochrome is that it is charged, meaning that there are positive and negative charges in the phytochrome and it is reactive. I will elaborate later on the meaning of reactive. We see first why the phytochrome can be charged and reactive. The reason is because the phytochrome is a conjugate protein that is attached to acid, base and sulfur. Now let me elaborate further on the nature of the phytochrome that it is reactive. There are two types of phytochrome. The first type is called phytochrome red. This is the inactive form, meaning that it is unable to do any biochemical process. However, it can absorb red light from the sun. The second type is phytochrome far red. Phytochrome far red is the active form. It can do biochemical processes in the plant and it can also absorb far red light. This light is found when the environment is dark. Next, I want to show you the interchangeable relationship between phytochrome red and phytochrome far red. Now, in the beginning, I introduced phytochrome in this color so that you can remember it is a blue-green pigment. But now, I'm going to change the color of the phytochrome to this pink color so that you can remember this is phytochrome red. So, when there is sun, Phytochrome red will absorb red light from the sun and become converted into phytochrome far red. So this dark red color is phytochrome far red. And you see this phytochrome far red in the dark, it can absorb far red light and return to phytochrome red. So from here you can see that in the daylight, Concentration of phytochrome far red increases, but at night, concentration of phytochrome far red decreases. Let me summarize. The relationship between phytochrome can be represented by this simple diagram, where the phytochrome red, which is the inactive form, absorbs red light released by the sun to become phytochrome far red, which is the active form. The active phytochrome far red can absorb far red light in darkness and become converted again into phytochrome red. So this simple chart is very useful when answering questions related to phytochrome. The phytochrome far red, which is the active form, is directly responsible for the flowering process. The phytochrome far red will actually stimulate the precursor of a flowering hormone. This flowering hormone is not ethane but florigen. So to make florigen, there are basic chemicals that we call the precursor present in the plant. 
but these precursors do not become fluorogen unless phytochrome farate is formed. So phytochrome farate will then mix the precursor together to form fluorogen. Then this fluorogen hormone will be translocated to the stem of the plant and then flowering will occur. So this is the biochemical process related to the active phytochrome farate. Let's now make a connection between photoperiodism and phytochromes. Now, based on photoperiodism, a shortly plant will flower when the relative darkness is more than critical night length. That means there is going to be more far red light present. When there is far red light, then the active phytochrome far red will absorb the far red light to become the inactive phytochrome red. Let me demonstrate here. So you see, for the short day plant to flower, the phytochrome far red concentration is going to decrease while the phytochrome red concentration is going to increase. But remember, phytochrome red is inactive. Therefore, it has no function in flowering. Phytochrome far red is the active form, which is involved in flowering. So for short day plants, what's going to happen is the concentration of phytochrome far red is going to decrease. But the low concentration of phytochrome far red is going to stimulate the synthesis of fluorogen, which will enable flowering in short day plants. So it's important for you to remember that for short day plants to flower, the concentration of phytochrome far red must be low. So keep this in mind. I'll move on to the long day plant. For long day plants, we have learned under photoperiodism that flowering will only occur when the relative darkness is less than critical night length. So if the darkness is less, that means the brightness is more. So there is going to be more red light present. When red light is present, what's going to happen is the inactive phytochrome red is going to absorb the red light and become converted into the active phytochrome far red. So like in the diagram here, you can see phytochrome red concentration is going to decrease whereas phytochrome far red concentration is going to increase. So in long day plants, there is going to be a high concentration of phytochrome far red and this high concentration is going to stimulate synthesis of fluorogen which leads to flowering in long day plants. So remember, for long day plants, for flowering to occur, the phytochrome far red concentration must be high. This is like when you studied auxin. Remember, in the shoot, auxin concentration must be high to promote cell elongation. But in the root, auxin concentration must be low to promote cell elongation. So it's the same situation here where in short day plants, phytochrome far red concentration must be low for flowering to occur. But in long day plants, phytochrome far red concentration must be high for flowering to occur. Here are two examples from my photoperiodism video explaining how flowering and non-flowering occurs in short day plants. This is where I stress the first rule of short day plant where the relative darkness must be more than critical night length. Now let's connect this with phytochromes. Now this extra darkness here is going to stimulate phytochrome far red to absorb the dark red light and convert into phytochrome red. 
So during this extra darkness, the concentration of phytochrome parade is going to decrease while the concentration of phytochrome red is going to increase. So remember the second rule. That is, for short day plants, flowering will occur when the phytochrome far rate concentration is low. So here, the phytochrome far rate concentration decreases and thus stimulates flowering. Let's try using the second example. In the second example, we find that when light was inserted into the darkness, flowering stopped. How do we explain this based on phytochrome? Now, when there is light, there will be red light. So, what's happening now is phytochrome red will absorb the red light and convert into phytochrome far red. So now, the concentration of phytochrome far red will increase. But remember, in short day plants, to flower, phytochrome far red must be in low concentration. So when phytochrome far red is in high concentration, it inhibits flowering. So in exams, when they ask you to explain why flowering occurs or does not occur, your answer Beginning must start with the concept of critical night length and then continue with phytochrome. Let me explain more using long day plant examples. So here we see that the darkness is more than critical night length, so flowering does not occur. This is because the first rule for long day plants is the darkness or relative darkness must be less than critical night length. So let's explain what's happening in this extra darkness. In the extra darkness, phytochrome far red will absorb the far red light and be converted into phytochrome red. So phytochrome far red concentration decreases, phytochrome red concentration increases. Now comes the second rule, that is, in long day plants, for flowering to occur, phytochrome far red concentration must be high. But in this instance, the concentration is low. So that is why flowering does not occur. Let's see over here. How is it flowering occurs? Okay. So you see there's a flash of light. When a flash of light is inserted, phytochrome red will absorb red light and be converted to phytochrome far red. So now the phytochrome far red concentration increases and following the rule for long day plants, high concentration of phytochrome far red will stimulate flowering. We have finally come to the end of the whole of chapter 9. Now, this topic would be a bit challenging because it is completely new, but by doing the exercises related to photoperiodism and phytochrome action, you should be fine. So, I'll see you soon with Chapter 10. Bye-bye.